We often think of archaeology as a hard science that can either prove or disprove things about the past. But in archaeology, things are not as black and white as all that. Hi, my name is Pete, and in 2024, I'm reading the whole Bible in its original languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, using a reading plan that I wrote myself, which is available in an ebook I've released for free. One passage I read today was Joshua chapter 8, verses 30 to 35, which is about Joshua building an altar on Mount Ebal. This site has been the subject of huge disagreement by archaeologists and biblical scholars over many decades, some of which you can find on the Wikipedia page on Mount Ebal. So it's a good opportunity to think about archaeology and the Bible. The location that is thought today to be Mount Ebal is the mountainous area between Asira Ash Shamalaya and Askar in the Palestinian territory of the West Bank. And on this mountain, back in the early 80s, a team of archaeologists discovered a stone structure. This picture is from an article by Adam Zertel about the site in the Biblical Archaeology Review. Details of all references I make in this video will be in the comments section below. Now, the excavated site is there. You can go and see it if you visit Palestine. It's even marked on Google Maps with pictures uploaded that someone has taken of the site. So there's no big mystery about the existence of this structure. The two big points of debate about archaeological sites like this are how do we date the site, as in what period of history do these remains actually relate to, and how should we interpret what we're seeing. And crucial to both of those questions are issues like what are the actual data at the site? How are the data collected? What's the context of the data, both locally at the site and the context of related sites? And what's the simplest story that can be told to explain these data? There's a great book by Ralph Hawkins examining the archaeological debate over this structure on Mount Ebal. Hawkins does a great job of presenting the actual data, clearly, and the discussions around its interpretation. I'll just look at one issue around the site of Mount Ebal that illustrates what is probably the biggest point of division among those who are engaged in biblical archaeology. The most glaring issue about biblical archaeology is the different views of the Bible as a historical source for the geographical area that is now Israel-Palestine. Hawkins does a great job of briefly summarising the different views of the value of the book of Joshua as a witness to history and how this has impacted the interpretation of the remains at Ebal. For example, Soggin's chief objection to an association of El Bernat with the altar of Joshua 8 30 to 35, was driven by an understanding of the book as having a late date, something about which all non-fundamentalist scholars agree. The assumption of a late date for the composition of the book of Joshua was one of the reasons Kempinski could not accept a cultic identification for the site in the first place. He argued that El Bernat could not be the site of the ceremonies described in Joshua 8, 30 to 35, because there were no Persian period remains found there, and that the site should be understood instead as a Canaanite site. Coogan, who did accept the cultic nature of the site, could not accept it as Israelite because of his understanding of Joshua as part of an idealised retrojection by the Deuteronomistic historian. Deva's rejection of the cultic nature of the site also appears to have been informed by an acceptance of post-exilic origins for the biblical materials. As mentioned above, evangelical scholars who argue for an exodus conquest in the 15th century also find the cultic identification difficult to accept. In a short article on the Mount Ebal site in the Archaeological Study Bible, it is stated that the current dating of the site does not fit with biblical chronology, which suggests an earlier 14th century date for Joshua and the conquest. So everyone comes to the site at Ebal with certain baggage because of the written sources. Either they inherently don't trust the sources, or they inherently do trust them, and that informs their interpretation of the archaeological data. The Bible, frankly, is divisive. The book of Joshua itself claims that the Torah split the peoples of ancient Canaan and even the Israelites themselves into two groups, those who are for the God of the Torah and those who are against. Today the Bible continues to spark debate and divide people into those who just cannot accept its claims to be a historical record and those who hold to it as the revealed truth of the God who made history. As you read the Bible, it forces you to pick a side. So if you want to read the rest of the Bible with me in 2024 in the original languages, then details on my Bible reading plan and EPUB reader, which is free to download and use, can be found in the description below. And if you like the video, please like the video. And if you want to get video updates of my whole Bible read through in the original languages in 2024, hit subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.